Hallelujah. But it also means it's good. Touch yourself, touch your, touch yourself, say it's good. Now, listen, even when stuff go crazy, you need to just touch yourself, say it's good. Even if you get bad news in the morning, you just lay your hands on yourself and say it's good. Even if you got a phone call before church to try to throw you off, just say it's good. Proverbs 6, 16. Look at this now. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, even seven are an abomination, which means a disgusting habit to him. Now, somebody else is ambitious. Now, how we go from it's good to these 16 the Lord hates? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. No, 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 no. Remember, stick with the one I said stick with. Say, neighbor. God don't like ugly. Father, this is a pastoral message today. This is going to help us get some stuff in order. And so today, Father, I pray that all disorder would leave. In the name of Jesus, Father, when we call our lives into order and disorder leaves, that's when favor comes. That's when a surge comes. That's when your increase comes. That's when your blessing comes. That's when the super gets added to the natural. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, just like in the Bible, when they would use the ram's horn of those so far to call things in order, today we use our shout to call everything that's out of order. I said we use our shout to call everything that's out of order into order in our lives. And we thank you that over these next few moments, by the time this word is preached, that everything that's out of order is going to be in order. And we're going to expect to see one thing and one thing only. And that is a surge, a sudden and powerful and forward upward movement in our lives. And we thank you that it is so. Somebody holler if you calling stuff in the order. <laughs> Hallelujah. Touch that other neighbor. Just you take your seats. Just tell them God don't like ugly. God don't like. You can be seated. Uh, as I've said, Teth is the Hebrew word for the number nine, and it means it's good. Now, the first week of this series, I taught you three principles to make your mentality Teth so that your reality could be Teth because your reality cannot be greater than your mentality. Say, my reality cannot be greater than my mentality. Which means if you want to live higher, you got to think higher. You want to live better, you got to think better. You want to live blessed, you got to think blessed. You want to live favored, you got to think favored. But now last week I taught you five prayers that people often pray, but they're not teth prayers or they're not good prayers. In fact, they're the wrong prayers. And if you pray the wrong thing, you'll have the wrong expectation. So you'll be frustrated with the manifestation. And I think there's some people in here that say, I'm sick and tired of being frustrated about the same thing over and over and over in my life. Look at your neighbor and say, get that CD. Now, this week, I want to use a colloquialism. A colloquialism is just a big word uh, to say something uh, in an informal fashion that you probably heard when you were growing up. We've already said it. Say, God don't like ugly. Now, now watch this. Now, for all of you who think that's scripture, that phrase appears nowhere in the Bible. Just like cleanliness is next to godliness ain't in the Bible. It got real quiet right there. Uh, but the principle it postulates does, and the principle is very simple, is that when people do ugly, which is just an unpleasant or repulsive thing, that, that God does not enjoy that. And we see this principle at play in Proverbs chapter 6. Proverb, which means wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom is the appropriate application of knowledge. You can be smart but not be wise. Uh, because wisdom says it's not just knowing, it's knowing what to do with what I know. Have you ever met somebody that's extremely intelligent, yet they don't have anything to show for the level of intelligence that they espouse? It's because they might be smart, but they are not wise. God does not just desire for you to be smart. He desires for us to be wise. In fact, he gave us an entire book called Proverbs, which means wisdom. Which means it's the appropriate way to apply the knowledge. But here's what wisdom also is. It's a shortcut. Please understand, you can be smart and know how to get there, but you know the long way. But if you're wise, you know how to get there. and You know how to take the shortcut. Test your neighbor say, I speak wisdom into your life. In fact, the scripture says, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord and the Lord would give, him, do, give it to him with liberality. I'm going to tell you that when you're wise, you don't have to work as hard because you'll know how to work smart. I'm going to tell you when you're wise, it ain't going to be as much of a struggle to get stuff done in your life because you'll know how to take the shortcut. And I don't know about you, but if there's a shorter way for me to get somewhere, I want to go that way. 
In fact, the scripture says that when the children of Israel, can I teach you for just a moment, that when the children of Israel were coming out of bondage for 430 years in Egypt, there was a shortcut, but the shortcut required a little bit of warfare, which means sometimes to accurately apply wisdom in your life, it's going to feel like it's worse. It's going to feel like there's warfare, but it's really the shortcut. Touch your neighbor say, it may feel like war, but it's the shortcut. Y'all don't know when to shout in Denver. That was your opportunity to shout because if you got some warfare going on in your life, stop crying about it. Look at it and say, that's my shortcut. That's my wisdom. It's getting me to my destination faster. It should have taken you 50 years, but because you can take the warfare. Ah, Proverbs 6, 16. It says, these six things the Lord hates. The, that word hates in the Greek uh, uh, is spelled the same way we'd spell sane, S-A-N-E. Uh, but it is sane. It means God is an enemy to these things. So Proverbs 6.16 really means these six things the Lord is an enemy to. Yes, seven of them are disgusting habits to him. Now watch this. In other words, the things listed are things that God is an enemy to. So if we do these things, in essence, we put ourselves in opposition to God. And as the phrase goes, God don't like ugly. Somebody say God don't like ugly. God is in opposition to these things because these things are in opposition to us. So he hates these things because these things hurt us. He doesn't hate us. He hates these things. And for us to be tough, we must cease practicing these things. Such a neighbor say God don't like ugly. All right, let's jump into it. Here's the first one in verse 17. A proud look. Got quiet. I can't anticipate it. That's so I bought my own shout section today. God doesn't like when we look down on people because the purpose of him allowing us to surge is so that we can, you can use our lives to change the lives of other people. Stop acting like you always been where you are. There was a day when you were at the bottom and if it had not been for his goodness and if it had not been for his mercy, you'd still be down there with them bottom feeders. But God looked at you and he saw past your junk, saw past your issues and said, I've chosen them and I've now, now watch this. This isn't just talking about literally looking down on people, but it refers to the mentality in which uh, and, and how we interact with others. Uh, please understand, you ever interacted with somebody who was convinced that they were superior to you simply because they had more than you, but the truth be told, the only reason they had more than you was because of a situation and circumstance they couldn't control? But so what are you trying to say? It's called grace. Grace is when he gives me what I do not deserve. It's called favor, which means he just looked at me and said, I'm going to treat you preferentially, not because you did anything so great, but because 2,000 years ago when I hung and when I died, I did one thing so incredibly well that I look at you with favor. Now watch. Don't look down on people because they sin differently than you. Many Christians, their Christianity is built upon them feeling superior to other people because their sins are less prevalent than others. All right, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me, so I'm going to come down your road. So you say, well, because I don't smoke, I'm a better Christian than them. But you a lie, though. So because your sin is different, that don't give you a right to look down on somebody. Touch your neighbor and say, don't look down at me. Because here's the truth. We're all works in progress. And here's the real truth. If he put our lives on the screen, we'd all have to put up the slave finger and walk up out the room. Just because you didn't know where that's from. That's slavery. Don't do that. It's quiet here. Now, watch this. A proud look isn't just about interacting with others. Touch your neighbor and say, don't look down on me. In fact, the next time you feel tempted to look down on somebody because they sin different than you, just remember that that could have been you. Next time you look at somebody that's homeless and you say, well, they should do this, that you don't know that story. So the best thing you should do is let that window down and give them a five. Touch your neighbor and say, put five on it. Don't look down because you don't know the stories that people have. Ask Job. Job didn't do nothing wrong, yet he found himself in a mess. So sometimes just because you're experiencing bad doesn't mean that you were bad. Sometimes God's going to use the bad to bring out something good. You know what that's called? It's called a surge. Watch this now. A proud look isn't just about interacting with others. It's about the actions we take like not admitting when we're wrong. If when you get called on something, you deflect and blame everybody else, that's pride. So when somebody says, what happened to you? Well, so-and-so, I didn't ask you nothing about so-and-so. I asked you about you. I got quiet. I knew the Christians were going to get quiet there. That's fine. I ain't studying. I brought my own sound section. 
Uh, here it is, a proud look. Watch this. Not asking questions when we should. That's pride. Well, I want to look dumb. So you're going to act dumb so that you don't look dumb? You're going to remain uninformed so that you don't appear to be uninformed. It got quiet right there. All right, watch this. Or staying in a comfort zone so you don't risk the embarrassment of failure. That's pride. I'm scared to fail, so I'm just going to stay in my comfort zone, which is pride. You call it wisdom. God calls it a proud look. And the book says he's an enemy to that. He's an enemy to that because anybody that ever became somebody in the scripture had to risk looking like a failure. Can I walk through the book for a moment? Moses had to risk looking like a failure, bringing those people out of bondage. He had never done that before. He'd never seen anybody in his bloodline before. But for this reason, what's he sent? His name, Moses, means to draw out or to pull out, which means his entire reason for being born was to go back to those people that were his people and bring them out of the bondage of Egypt. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. Jesus had to risk looking like a failure because for three days they said, I told you he was a lie. I told you he wasn't really God. I told you he wasn't about nothing. Ooh, but early one Sunday morning, I feel like preaching like I'm back home. He, early one Sunday morning, he said, you thought I was a failure for three days, but what you did not know is that a resurrection was scheduled. Touch your neighbor and say, don't you fear failure. But pride will tell you, don't even risk it because you might fail. And here's the trip. You scared of something that truth be told, you already do. Somebody say a proud look. All right, watch this. Watch this. Say, Lord, deliver us from a proud look. All right, here's the second thing the scripture says. It says a lying tongue. If you sit next to a lie, now I'm just talking about nothing. nothing, nothing. Watch this. Lying is often uh, revealed shame about the truth. Again, a lie is often revealed shame about the truth. And when people lie to others, it's because they lie to themselves. So they give to others what they give to themselves because they cannot give to you what they do not give to themselves. Because Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, which then tells us there's a potent principle there, which makes it a mathematical equation, which means you cannot expect from people what they do not first do for themselves. So some of you have friends and you get mad because you're a better friend to them than they, uh, uh, than, than they are to you. But the reality is it's because they don't give that to themselves. They're disloyal to self. So how in the heaven they're going to be loyal to you? They won't even be faithful to the gym for themselves. So how are they going to be faithful to show up for you? Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I, that's all right. Got my own section. Well, uh, uh, this, hey Amen. I got one. There it is. Now, 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 now watch this. Technically, now this is going to blow your mind. There are over 30 types of lies. Isn't that something? By technical definition, there are over 30 types of lies. And the most practiced, I'm just going with the most practiced. I don't have time to go in 30 lies. Uh, the most practiced are deflecting. Deflecting is Adam's lie. It's where you avoid the subject. Adam, have you done what I said not to? The woman. Deflection. God says, so you're going to lie to me to my face like that? All you had to do was tell me you did it. That would have been the end of the whole Bible. Okay, good. You repent? Okay, good. The end. Instead, we got thousands and thousands of years of junk because he deflected. All right? All right? If you were to check your life, when's the last time you deflected? What happened with so-and-so? Well, so-and-so, I didn't ask you about so-and-so. I asked you about you. Omission is the second most practiced sin. You omit the info that makes you responsible. You conveniently leave the, that part out. So what happened to the cookie jar? Well, you know, it broke. So it broke itself. It's quiet. This my past keeps showing up. Right, but you omitted the part where you responded to the text. Don't you be angry at God because the past showed up and you the one responded to it. The only way to know that you've conquered it is for him to throw it in your face and see what you do with it. It got quiet right there. All right, all right. The next most practiced lie is a pathological liar. 
A pathological liar denies reality. They live in an alternate reality. It's almost like a psychosis of sorts because it's a parallel reality. You're like, what? And this is dangerous because if you try to reason with these people, you're going to be mad. You're going to hate people. Just stop touching them and say, don't try to reason with them. You don't try to reason with the pathological liar. You just let them live over there. Some of y'all, you didn't lost. Listen, you still uh, getting over bitterness from people because you tried to reason with a pathological liar. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Bishop, how do I know they're pathological? It's because their recount of the situation is nothing like what happened. You listen to their story, you're like, what? Come on, y'all know. Y'all, if you don't know nobody, you the one we know. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. They live in a whole nother reality. It's like, what? What are you talking about? Well, you just, you, you just did this and I ain't done nothing. I ain't even been there. What are you talking about? With the way you act, I ain't done nothing to you. What you, what are you talking about? So, uh, okay, okay, I'm trying to do my confession. So, so I was talking to a pastor the other day, and, and, he, and he said, he said, he said some things. And, and I said, what are you talking about? Now, I, I went, I went to Thug Bishop real quick. No, I, I really did. Because I said, what are you talking about? I said, name something specific you're talking about. Well, it's just the whole thing. I said, you're a liar. And I said, where I'm from, we put another word in front of lie. Okay, this is too much for y'all. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I, I said, the reason you can't name anything is because there's nothing to name. You live in an alternate reality. I was a pastor, but I got, I got him right. He found the Lord. <laughs> okay. Pathological liars project onto you their own issues. You don't care about me. So that's why I spent four hours with you on the phone. That's why I wrote that check. I don't care about you. That, that's why, that's, that, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Exaggerations, the next most practice. I get in these deeper at 1115. Exaggeration. These are sensationalists. Sensationalism means you make it seem a little bit more than what it is for the sake of effect. These are people that call you, let me do like the ladies, girl. They're like, what, what, what? Did you see scandal? Wait, 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 wait a minute. What, wait, wait, wait. what you do all of that sensationalist intro for? So, so, fellas, you know, a, 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 a sensationalist exaggeration, uh, 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 you know, they, 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 they make it seem, man. You're like, what? Uh, like, what did you do all of the extra for? When you're a sensationalist, you have to be careful because your credibility deteriorates. It's like the boy that cried wolf. Eventually, ain't nobody going to believe what you say. It got quiet right in there. Sensationalist, everything is always so much more than what it is. Somebody didn't speak to you this morning because they were trying to hear them getting the worship experience, and so now you got a whole conspiracy theory about how the church is sitting up. You ain't that important. The church trying to sit up and got an agenda. No, you live in a parallel universe, and you're sensationalist. It's quiet. Now, remember, these are the things God says he's an enemy to. Yeah. Sound section, that's your cue. <laughs> All right, here, 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 there's, there's only two more, two more that are the most practiced. Remember, there's over 30 types of technical lies. Dismissal. These are people that you say, why did you do such and such? Here's how they respond. Why would I do that? They didn't answer the question. They dismiss the postulation. They dismiss the premise. And then you'll say to yourself, that makes sense. But they never actually answered the question. They dismiss the question. 
I know all the liars are really upset now because I'm telling all your stuff. I know you're like, I can't believe that. I should have been at a graduation this weekend. <laughs> Why would I do that? That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. But did you do it? <laughs> All right, the last type of most practiced lie is a white lie. This is where people lie to keep the peace. She said, I didn't want to start that, so I just, just tell her what she want to hear. Tell him what he want to hear. I don't feel like, you know how they, you know how they are. Come on, some of y'all know, especially during the month of May where you're going to see a lot of family and stuff like that. Just leave Uncle Trude alone. Don't say, don't say nothing to her. Just tell us, just tell her she's fine. Just tell her she's all right. Don't say nothing to her. But the Bible says God's an enemy to that. Oh, I mean, sometimes you got to learn how to just, you know, you just got, you know, somebody, you know, just got, you know, <laughs> sweeten this up. Son, sweeten this up. Sometimes just, you know, how to look. It's like you surgeon. <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. Y'all following the point? You, you, you following the principle? I'm just using that example. Okay. Does this make me look fat? <laughs> Favored and Teff. <laughs> I'm using that as an example. Y'all follow the principle? But God says he's an enemy to even a white lie. He's an enemy to it. When you lie to keep the peace. He said, I ain't going to tell the two because I'm going to hear about it all day. That's why you keep going from crisis to crisis is because you settle for temporary false peace rather than having the war you need to have. Got quiet in the church. Now, regardless of the type of lie, let's say this. Say, Lord, deliver us from lying. And it starts with simply interrupting yourself in a lie and saying, that's not the truth. What I actually said or did is this. Even in a white lie. Were you here on time? Huh? Give me the lie. So just, let's see, I know, see, I know church folk, y'all was just, the devil, that ain't the devil. That's generational. You watch your mama lie, you watched her mama lie, you watch your daddy lie, you watch his daddy lie, and, and, but, but that's why God says your bloodlines never became what it could be because y'all stand in opposition to me because you trade me for a lie. But today. And not only but today, but you. You are the interruption to the dysfunction of your bloodline. Now, now, so first one's a proud look. Second, I'm almost through. It's a lying tongue. The next one is hands that shed innocent blood. Don't create loss for people that did nothing wrong to you. And this is often done through gossip because gossip murders people's reputation and influence. And you often don't even know what you're talking about. So you might say, Bishop, I, I ain't never shed nobody's blood. That one doesn't apply to me. Right. But, but, but from, a, from, a, uh, from a literal sense, but from a philosophical and very practical and pragmatic sense, uh, you've murdered more people with your tongue. Because you talk about what you don't know anything about. And let me tell you, especially for those of you who aspire to do great things and you want God to really use you, please understand, you better understand, there's a different type of life when, you, when, when you're in the fishbowl than when you're watching the fish. It's easy to talk about the fish when you're outside of the fish bowl. But when you're the fish inside the bowl, all of a sudden now you got, well, why are they always talking about me? Well, I got all these haters, well, all of that. Well, when you were out there looking at the fish, you were a hater and a gossip. So now when you get in the fish bowl, life is lived differently when you have to live behind people watching your every move, watching your every action. You got quiet right there. Well, I heard, but you don't know. I read it on the internet because everything on the internet's true. It got quiet right there. Especially, all right, I'm just going to go and do it since you ain't going to say that. Especially Christian people because Christian people, you know, <clears throat> in the, you know, I'm just saying that so y'all know what to pray about. No, you're just, a, you're just shedding innocent blood. Because how many people did you, did you, did you say stuff uh, to or about? And it wasn't accurate, but it's because you got it from somebody 
And because it was so juicy and exciting, My, 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 my. Say, Lord, deliver us from shedding innocent blood. So here's how you do that. Somebody got a question about somebody? They over there. Matter of fact, let me walk you over there to them. So-and-so got a question about such and such, such and such. Y'all have a good day now. <laughs> because the Bible says he is an enemy to anybody that murders somebody's influence. Number 18, or verse 18, a heart that devises wicked plans. The Lord hates this, which means in Hebrew, he's a what? Enemy to it. Now, a heart, we understand in Hebrew is the word leb, L-E-B, which means mind. Now, wicked means false and deceitful ideas. Watch this. God says, I am an enemy to anybody who comes up with false and deceitful ideas. Okay. Schemes and scams. Okay. See, y'all said something. See, when I walk around the table, that means I got to, see, y'all just, just say amen to that. All right? So how you claiming family members on your taxes that, and call and look at how the Lord blessed me. No, you stole that from the government. Yeah, okay. See, y'all, I done the devil. That ain't the devil. No. And your household income is well above the threshold to be receiving government assistance. They ain't going to say nothing to me, but that's all right. <laughs> I brought my thug jacket today, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm just being facetious. And by that, I just mean very aggressive in the presentation of the scriptures. All right? God says he's an enemy to that. Supposed to be at work at 8. You had your friend clock you in. Right, just keep it real sweetened. For the, just keep it sweetening up for me real good. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God says he's an enemy to that, which is why sometimes you feel like, God, it's so hard. He's like, because you fight me. You ain't fighting the enemy. You're fighting me. And nobody ever comes against me and wins. So watch this. Watch this now. But there's another word of the meaning wicked. Y'all still with me? It's the word iniquity. Iniquity is generational a generational curse, generational sin. Uh, that is just a destructive pattern of behavior passed down from one generation to the next. So listen to this. In other words, if after being taught about your generational curses, if you don't break them, scripturally, you have put yourself in opposition to God. So if you know there's something in your bloodline and you've been taught it and you just sit up there and say, that's just the way I am, God says, but you've made yourself an enemy to me. What are you? Just your neighbor say, I'm the exception. Tell him, say, because I'm the interruption. All right, here we go. We just got a couple of more. Got a couple of more. Next one, it says, uh, uh, well, let's, let's do this. Say, Lord, deliver us from wicked planning. All right, here's the next one. Uh, feet that are swift to running to evil. Evil in Hebrew means bad cal calamity or contrary to. So watch what he says. God says, he hates or he's an enemy to feet that are fast to run to bad or to run to what's contrary to it or them. I need to get this. I need to get this. I need to get this. Maybe trouble doesn't find you. Maybe you've been running to it. And the it is a them. All right. <laughs> Notice what he said, feet that are swift to run to evil. Now, 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 now watch this, watch this. We make ourselves an enemy to God when we run to stuff that's contrary to us. What do you run to when you're stressed out? What do you run to when you're angry? What do you run to when you're frustrated? What do you run to when you're mad? Why is it that you always are quick to go back to your past when your present gets tough? 
Now, please understand, that none of this is judgment or condemnation. I just want you to get, uh, Malcolm X said like this in the movie, I don't know if he said it in real life, but in the movie, he said, if, if we'll get on God's side, God will be on our side. So, so rather than saying, Lord, come bless my mess, in other words, let's just knock the mess out and say, Lord, come on. That make sense? All right, so, 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 so watch this, watch this. You chose that sorry relationship. You chose that sorry friendship. Y'all ain't gonna say amen? You chose to be a side chick. You chose to spend your money poorly and not read your bishop's book, getting your finances in order. You chose not to listen. So you ran the evil. He said, the devil's attacking. You ran to the devil and was like, don't hurt me though. But here's what I love about God. If I can run to evil, that also means I can run from evil. Somebody holler, Lord, deliver us from running to evil. If you ran to a mess, you can run from a mess. But, but, but he says, God says, God says, he says, don't run to what's contrary to you. So you want to be out of debt, so you run to debt to get out of debt. See it practically? All right. So, so you want to have a, you, you, you want to you wanna surge, but you keep running to people that don't want to surge. And trying to convince them to come on the trip with you. You just need to let them stay where they're going to stay. You better learn how to go with the goers. Touch your neighbor and say, go with the goers. Which means, listen, if you're surging, come on with me. But if you ain't surging, you stay down there. But I'm not, to, watch this. Remember Lot's wife. Lot got, uh, his wife got caught up because the scripture says she turned and she looked behind him. Which means she kept trying to run behind people and check behind people, which ended up messing her life up. You messed up enough of your life trying to get people to go somewhere that don't want to go nowhere. Now, if they ain't going to surge, you need to tell them, I love you, but I. Ain't nobody got time for that. You sitting here and had 14 interventions over the last six days. They don't want to listen. Leave them alone. They don't want to hear. You're wasting your words. How many meetings you going to have about the same subject? They don't want to listen to you. So let them get out there in the pig pen, and once they get sick of the pigs and the mud and the dirt and the waste, then they'll come, then they'll get, they'll get their life. Did y'all get that? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> now, now, now watch this, watch this, verse 19, and, and then we're done. It says, a false witness who speaks lies. Now, watch this. The difference between the liar in verse 17 and the one in verse 19 is that this one refers to lying to other people about other people. Don't lie on people if you don't like them. Just pray for them because if you sow that, you're going to reap that, and a harvest is always greater than the seed sown. See, some of what you call weapons being formed against you is actually harvest of lies. You sowed lies, and so you're harvesting lies. Got quiet in there. Now, the Lord says he's in opposition to anybody who lies to other people about other people. Got quiet there. Amen. Does your neighbor say, don't lie on me. And here's how often how we lie and don't even know we do it. We assume and we make an assumption truth. You assume because they didn't respond to the text that they don't want to, they, they, but you, you never even question whether or not they got it. So now you are, all is here, and you don't even know if they got it. And now you going off lying on them for something you don't even know if they got And then when it happens to you, you cry in bloody murder. I can't believe this. Well, you sold it. 
Assumptions are the lowest form of intelligence. Especially when you can ask a question. Doesn't anybody say, just ask. You ain't got to gossip and lie about whether or not your neighbor's rich. They rich. Uh, somebody going to receive it, right? You ain't going to lie about whether or not your neighbor's doing better now than they've ever done in their whole life. They are. All right. Here's the last one. And, and this one, this one, uh, th this, this one's, this one's the one that, 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 that is the coup de grace, if you will. It says, and one who sows discord amongst the brethren. Now, sows, I'm going to make it real simple for you. Sows means they start mass and they leave mass. And discord is sown when people have opposing agendas and motives, but they act as if they have the same agenda and motives as the others. That's where discord comes from. We're not actually pursuing the same thing. You espouse to be pursuing what I'm pursuing, but you're pursuing your thing. So we're not pursuing the thing, which is why we can't agree on anything. So even in your families, you got discord because the truth be told, they don't want the family to be good. They want to look like they're the star in the family. Y'all, y'all, okay. Y'all ain't gonna send it. You know, you know. They don't actually want to break generational curses. They want to be needed by everybody else in the family so that they have their non-sanctioned church. So they practicing therapy and counseling without no license. I, I'm saying something. They'll shout at the 11:15. They. <laughs> so how is discord sown? It's sown through gossip. Gossip is whenever information that should be shared with all parties is shared with some parties for the purposes of influencing them against the other party. Bishop, I thought we were surging. You are going to surge. Because God says, if God's an enemy to these things, then that tells us that if we are making a practice of these things, then that might explain why surge hasn't manifested. Not because the devil's blocking it, but God says, I'm an enemy to that. But if you'll get rid of that, all right, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Difficult and sour attitudes. Your neighbor might have one now. It's amazing. One day I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a stage cam where you can see what I see. It's awesome when you can see the spirits begin to manifest. And they're trying to intimidate the pulpit. It's amazing when you see it. All right, a sour attitude. It shows discord. But come on, we're gonna do this. Well, I don't know. I, what you, you don't need to know nothing. Only thing you need to know is how to do what you told. You got quiet right there. You dealt with people with difficult and sour attitudes. It's just difficult. Just to be difficult. Just because it's Monday. Because it's Friday. It won't be difficult. They're extra. Just because they want to be extra. Because they were never celebrated as a kid. And so as an adult, they get celebrated by causing issues and drama. Negative and unnecessary comments. And then here's what they'll do. Here's what they'll do. They're, they're passive aggressive. So here's what they'll do. Well, I'm not going to say nothing. Well, see, if you're around me and you say that, I'm going to tell you, no, you're going to say what you just said because you shouldn't have said that much. Now say what you got to say. And you do what you got to do, but you need to know I, I'm going to do what I got to do. Y'all met folk like that. If you ain't met nobody, you the one we met. Open rebellion. I'm not doing that. We're talking about how discord gets sown. Distracting people who are in the process of learning to love God, love people, and love life with your lust because you forgot this is his house, not some other type of house.
Discord. You don't come up in here to shop. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Say amen to that. This ain't no meat market. Say amen to that. So now Discord is sown because you didn't start it, man. You shouldn't have started and now you're trying to cover me. No, 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 no. God says, I'm an enemy to that one. And in fact, this is the one God says that's a disgusting habit. It's an abomination to me. All of the previous six things mentioned in Proverbs 6 are things that begin discord, which is what makes this seventh one a disgusting habit because most messy people do it habitually and they don't even know it. And that's what Proverbs was talking about. He, he, he said, he said, he said, he said, listen, this one's a disgusting habit. It's because you start issues with people and you stir up discord with people. Discord starts as, as, as deceit, and deceit in Scripture is first uh, 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 demonstrated through that of a serpent, which serpent in Hebrew doesn't mean snake, it means deceiver. But we've connected the word serpent with snake, so check this out. What does a snake do? It slithers. <laughs> it has secrets with salacious information. Prowls in the background. Hallelujah, Bishop. Say it, sir. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I came with a snake killing anointing on me today. You better hear what I'm saying. And as a matter of fact, in the name of Jesus, I declare that every snake, every serpent that's been present in your life, the head of that thing is cut off now in the name of Jesus. You will not be deceived another day. You will not be tricked another day. You will not break your focus another day. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say, Lord, deliver us from starting mess and leaving situations messy. Now, ain't that something? Now, now this is the 915, so I'm going to end it real nice. 1115, we're in real, real, real high praise. Now, I, I want you to say this, especially in the context of, of life. Uh, Napoleon said this. He said, never interfere with an enemy when they're in the process of destroying themselves. And so oftentimes in life, you're mad at God, you're mad at the devil, you know, you stomp it on the devil, he ain't even down there. <laughs> you know, clap your hands like the devil's in there, he ain't in your hands. You know, church folk be saying some stuff, you know. Clap the hands like the devil's in between your hands. I mean, he ain't in there. He's talking to God about what you said yesterday. <laughs> Revelation 12, and he's the accuser of the brethren. The purpose of a teaching like this, I know it's some heavy stuff. I know, it's, I know it's some like, whoa, stuff. But it's important stuff because the Bible says God's an enemy to this stuff. And notice how most of it has to do with how we treat other people. And so God says, you ain't doing this until you do this right. I mean, you want to surge you're going to have to learn how to treat people right. <laughs> Touch your neighbor say, do me right. When my new Jack Swing people in the room, you know, Heavy D them had a song out years ago that said, do me right. Now, that's another one. Do me right. That one. <laughs> now, 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 I want us to get this. As, as a church, I want us to get this. I want us to get this. I, I, we will, hear me clearly, we will not be a people who just play the church game and treat one another poorly. I, I will not have that. You will not have that. If you're an internet campus, we will not have that. If you're watching at a Roku site, that's not who we are. 
We don't want to be what the world says we are. We are people that will build one another up, that will encourage one another, that will bring out the best in one another, that will speak to the king in one another. But we will not be a people who are practicing stuff God says he's an enemy to. And so some of you today, you know what? You got, you got some apologies you need to give. And in between the experience, especially if you dream team and you'll be the next one, you just need to start making your list. And if you only come 915, you sit out there in the vestibule and just get your paper. I'm going to do it when I get home. No, you're not. You're going to get home and go take your nap and then forget. You're going to go to brunch and get full and go to sleep. You make your list and say, you know what? I lied to that. Pro- I shouldn't even done that. I had a stank attitude. Shouldn't even had one. No wonder it feels like I'm fighting God. I am. He's an enemy to this stuff. Not to us, but to these things. And you hear what I'm saying? I'm out of time. Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, deliver us from these things. Thank you that you give us an opportunity to make the changes necessary in life so that we can move and walk in what you have ordained. Forgive us, Father. We've all done these things. We've all done them. And truth be told, may do them again. So we ask you for forgiveness, Father. And we ask you for the grace to not repeat these things. Give us the grace to bring out the best in one another. Give us the Give us the grace to encourage one another. Give us the grace to speak to the king and one another. Give us the grace to speak life into one another because clearly these are things that you said you're an enemy to, but they have to deal with how we treat people. Forgive us for our wrong. We receive that forgiveness. Say, I receive that forgiveness. Some of you have even done it to yourself. You created discord in you. He lied to you about you. But today, but today, I speak freedom into your life. And I speak that you are delivered from these things today. I speak it into your life in the name of Jesus. I declare you will not be bound by these seven things. Not another day of your life. I said, Teff, it's good. You are free. Somebody shout, I'm free from it. I said, shout it, shout, I'm free from it. Now, in this worship experience, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you need to become a Christian. Today's your day. Secondly, if you've given your life to the Lord, but you've not been faithful in serving him, I've got great news for you. There is forgiveness for you. We've all made mistakes. We've all sinned and fallen short of his glory. What I love about him is that he's not the God of a second chance, because we use that one up like 15 minutes after the first chance. He's the God of another chance. And what I love about him is that just when you think, I really blew it this time, he'll come over there and talk to you and say, are you done? You had enough of doing it like that? You had enough of trying it your own way? You going to do what I say now? You going to do, you going to do what, you going to do, you going to do what I say? Then he picks you up out of that mess. He says, come on, let's go. For some of you, you're in a cycle of falling. You get up on Sunday, <laughs> gone on Monday. Get up on Wednesday, gone on Thursday. When the name of Jesus, I decree that cycle ends right, not next week, now. Somebody say, I received that. Either one of those of you need to become a Christian or recommit yourself to Jesus wherever you're at. In the auditorium or on the internet campus or wherever you're at, count of three, I want you to throw your hand up. And when you do that, we're going to shout and celebrate for you because we were all one standing in that same place. And that you're at harvest. Don't feel judged. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel like people are going to look down on you. No, 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 no. The only reason somebody be looking down is because they're putting their hand down there to pull you up. Matter of fact, just grab your neighbor's hand and just lift it up. Just lift it up. Just lift it up. I said, grab your neighbor's hand. Just lift it up. Just, that, that's what your neighbor's doing for you. They're lifting you up. You're not in this life by yourself. You're not in this journey by yourself. I know you feel alone. You are not alone. There's a church full of folk that's got your arm. And when you feel like falling, when you feel like failing, rise up. And you can lift that hand and go, now, 
Another one of those you need to become a Christian. Recommit yourself to Jesus on the count of three. Throw your hand up. And we're going to shout and celebrate for you. Because today is your day to get some tap in your life. Get the good in your life. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. If that's you, throw your hand up. I see you. I see you. I see you. Oh, come on, Harvest. Give God praise for every hand. Uh, somebody's mama, somebody's cousin, somebody's uncle. Now, when everybody, lay your hands on yourself. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for dying in my place because of that belief and because of that confession. If this is my first time praying this, I am born again. If I was far from you, I'm reconnected to you. Great days are ahead of my life. Death is present. I believe that I've received the grace to be delivered from those seven things I learned about today. I'm going to love God, love people, and love life. If this is my first time praying this, I am now a Christian. If I was far from you, I'm reconnected to you. In Jesus' name. Give God praise, everybody, for every decision today. Oh, hallelujah. I said give God praise for every decision today. That's somebody's mama, somebody's uncle, somebody's brother. We just depopulated hell and populated the kingdom. Now listen, if you just made that decision, I want you to take out your mobile phone and text the word decision to the phone number 59769. And when you do that, we're going to send you a text message right away that's going to give you some free tools to help you serve Jesus faithfully. Most of you are seated, so just get two or three hugs. Around. Well, I guess get two, one and two. And maybe you can get a little half back one or something like that. Get two hugs in and just tell them, Tef, 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 Tef. And we're going to get ready to give in just a moment. Did you get something today?